Welcome to the Horror Factory, where we dive deep into the internet to unearth bone-chilling true stories that will make your skin crawl. My name is Zach, and today we're going to do something a little different. In this episode, I found a story that will have you second-guessing every Craigslist ad and rental property listing you come across. Today we follow Amber, a college student who, while looking for a new home, encounters a friend of the landlord. What starts as a routine viewing of this home quickly turns into her worst nightmare. Join us as we unravel this true encounter, and remember to always trust your instincts. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell us about your scary stories in the comments section below. Who knows, maybe yours will be next. Now on to Amber's story, The Rental. My name is Amber, and I was 20 years old at the time. I was excited to see the rental property that I found nearby the college I was going to. It was a quaint little house with a white picket fence and a cozy front porch. The landlord informed me that he wouldn't be available to show me the house, and instead, he sent a friend of his to the job. When I arrived, I met Mark. Mark had an odd way of speaking, and his eyes seemed to dart around the room constantly, which made me feel uneasy. As we walked through the living room, I noticed a strange smell that I couldn't quite place. I tried to ignore it and focus on the house, but the smell lingered. We went to the kitchen, and as we were discussing the appliances, Mark's phone rang. He answered it, and his demeanor changed instantly. He started whispering into the phone, and I felt uncomfortable. It was maybe a couple of minutes, and he was still whispering into the phone, and he started to seem to get more agitated by the second. I didn't really know what to do. I feigned interest in the house and asked to see the upstairs bedrooms, and Mark reluctantly led me upstairs, still on his phone. As we reached the top of the stairs, I noticed that one of the bedroom doors was locked. I asked about it, and Mark told me it was his personal room and not to worry about it. Before I was uncomfortable, now I was ready to leave. There was no chance that I was going to be rooming in a house with a person that I don't know that had already creeped me out within five minutes of meeting them. I tried to back away, but he just started walking towards me in the same direction. You know that moment, that precise moment, when a predator shifts from his luring end stage? He knew that I knew that something wasn't right. That's when he grabbed my arm. I saw a small window in the corner of the room, and I knew it was my only chance. I managed to break free and run towards the window. I knew that if I didn't get out of there, I might never get out of there. I managed to get the window open a little more and stepped out onto the roof and jumped down to the front yard. I ran to my car and I drove off and I called the police. The police got in touch with the landlord who said his friend wasn't able to make it to the showing and when the police arrived at the house, there was no one there. Who was I talking to? What was behind that door that was locked? And what was that smell? When searching for a new place to live, it's important to do your research and take precautions to ensure your safety. Bring a friend or family member with you. By being vigilant and aware, maybe someone could avoid what I had gone through altogether. To the person that we'll call Mark, let's not meet again.